Just one read to you, and then please don't jump to conclusion. לא יגרש אדם את אשתו. בית שמאי אומרים, יש מחלוקת, היא השיבה אוף שמאי, and היא השיבה אוף הלל. More than 2,000 years ago. בית שמאי אומרים, לא יגרש אדם את אשתו, אלא אם כן מצא בה דבר ערווה, שנאמר, it's written into the Ramami 24, כי מצא בה ערוות דבר. He found something in her, not good, not lack of modesty, misbehaving, he's allowed to divorce it. טוב, בית הלל say, even if she burned his food, אפילו הקדיחה את תבשילו. רבי עקיבא says, אפילו מצא אחרת נאה ממנה. If he found a woman that is prettier than her, or younger, let's say, 10-20 years younger, prettier, so you know what, thank you very much for all these years, here is your ketuba, go back to your father, you come next. Let me ask you a question. Now we are now, I just mentioned three of the most holiest, biggest, giant chachamim we had in the history of the world. Shammai, Hillel, and Rabbi Akiva. On the top ten that ever learned Torah in this place, on earth. Now let me ask you a question. Go to any rabbi in the world. LA, New York, Israel. Do you know one rabbi, normal, normal, that will say such things? Oh, for the Rav, my wife burned the Gondi. <laughs> Throw her out of the house. <laughs> Replace her. But she didn't learn how to cook Gondi. Poshat, such criminal. <laughs> If a rabbi would say such thing, right the way they put pictures of him, be careful from this, it's dangerous, no? <laughs> oh, uh, rabbi, my husband said that someone came to work in his office and she's prettier than me. So he wants to divorce me and take her. What am I going to do? He's right, you should do it. <laughs> ah, Rabbi, I'm coming to you to save my marriage. It's not making sense. So what's going on here? What do you think? We are holier than this Chachamim? We are smarter than them? In a billion years, we won't reach 1% of their level. It's the, the highest level of people that ever live. The whole Torah they knew by heart. All the Nevi'im, all the Chumash, all the Mish... Everything by heart. All their life they learned Torah in the highest modesty, simple, down to earth. Remember, this was over 2,000 years ago. There was no naked people walking in the street back then. Everything was perfect. The shechita was on their, hand, hand, their own hands. There was no uh, all kinds of nonsense that you hear today that people do. Because no one was divorcing at all, it was like just nonsense. And, 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 and back then, I told you that seven years ago, my rabbi said that the word, to say the word divorce was a crime. It was not, I remember in my class, I went to school in Israel, nobody was divorced. There was one guy that his father died in a war. That's it, everybody had parents. So today you come to a class, who's divorced from divorced family? Everybody raised their hand, the teacher also. Hashem <laughs> Yerachem, what's going on? So now let me tell you the secret of this Gemara. Do you know when your marriage is suffering and it's sick and it needs to be cured immediately before it will be over? When your wife messed up in the food and it bothers you, then you know you have a problem. Because when you're in love with the woman, and you admire her holiness, and modesty, and spirituality, and she messed up here and there sometimes with the food, the last thing you would care about is this. It would not even be worth to make a comment. There was one rabbi in Israel, his wife making him tea every day, and, he, and she puts one spoon of sugar in it. One time he left a little bit in a, in a glass. She said, let me finish it. She drank it and it was salt. She's been putting six months salt in his tea. Salty tea! <laughs> not only it's not Persian tea, which is already suffering, all the other teas. On top of it, salt. She's saying to him, Gershon, who's master? Why? You never told me I put salt for six months. I finished all that. I didn't want to upset you. <laughs> One guy came to the house of Rav Ben Zion, Abba Shaul, Zecher Tzaddik Vekadosh Livracha. He said, Rabbi, I want you to prepare a get for me. I'm going to get married. He said, wait. He opened, wait here. He see Rabbi Benzion, Abba Shaul, picked up his pants to the knees, 
and he's doing sponja, mapping the floor. When he finished to clean the house, he turned around, the guy disappeared. He came out, he see the guys walking. He ran after him. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I didn't mean to be disrespectful, come back. He said, no, no, I got my answer, I'm such a fool. I came to you to complain about my wife and I see you mapping the floor. Yeah. I had one guy that his family came from Muslim mentality. Some Sfaradim came from Arab countries. Some of their parents still came with the Muslim mentality. What does it mean Muslim mentality? The woman is less than a shoe. Has no value. She's nothing. Just cook, be quiet. You're not allowed to drive, not allowed to vote, be in a room, don't come near anyone, don't talk, nothing. Whatever he wants to do to her, he does, she has no say. That's the mentality. And if she mess up in a cooking, oh, 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 what's going to happen to her? That's not Jewish mentality. Torah is the exact opposite. So he comes to me and says, that's it, Rabbi, I want you to help me to, to, to give her a get. I ask him, why? Sometimes I come from work and there is no hot meal on the table. I say, that's it. Everything else is good with her. She's, she's good, she's a good wife. You like how she looks? Yeah, yeah, everything is good. That's it, just this. I never saw it in my house. When my father came home, the meal was always on the table. So I asked her, if you know it bothers him so much, why don't you try to work a little bit harder to make a, a hot meal for him every day? She said, it's not easy, I work until 5 p.m. When I heard she walks out of the house, I almost fainted. I thought she'd sit all day doing nothing. I work until 5, sometimes I have no groceries in the house. By the time I get home, I have to go to the supermarket, buy, come home, clean, cook. He arrives at 7, it's not always I'm ready. So I told her, I don't understand. How do you even dare to complain? She goes and brings money into the house, work until 5 and still expect a hot meal? I will not even ask once a hot meal for it. I come 2 a.m. after my lectures, do you know what I eat? Well, I cannot ask for demands, prepare for me a plate that I press on the microwave and eat it up. No, take the pretzels with hummus, eat a few of them, make bracha achrona and go to sleep. Wow, that's your dinner? Yes. Really? He <laughs> started to realize something is wrong with him. So Hashem gave you such a gift and this is how you behave? Wow, he felt so horrible. He never learned about marriage. A husband never learned what it means to be a husband, and wife never learned what it means to be a wife. One example, do you ever argue in front of the children? It's a big crime to do such thing. You have disagreement? Not in front of them, ever. He say yes, she said no, the other way around, you go to the room and solve your issues. Show love in front of the kids, meaning, Show them that you love your wife. Show them that you love the husband. Don't be cold as ice. Some places the kid never saw one minute of love of their parents. Two roommates. That's how they're going to treat their wives. For them it's a cry to give the wife a hug or a kiss. Why? Robots. Robots. That's the Torah. The opposite. The Ben Ishai has a whole book about Tikkun HaYesod. They do it in Tkufat HaShovevim, in Hebron, in Ekote. One time I learned that I got the shock of my life, 25 years ago. He described why Hashem made the man intimately the way he is, and the woman, and the connection, and what he does in the upper world. He goes into the most intimate details. Bottom line from this book, the intimacy between a man and his wife is the highest moment in the world. The highest. Unbelievable. And how it makes Hashem happy. If it's done in a kosher way. Mikveh, this, modesty way, not like animals, of course. Judaism, it's not Christianity, make no mistakes. 